Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about over and under estimates from left, right, trapezoidal, and midpoint sums. And so uh, let's get started. And some, this is a really important idea. It's really like a, a graphical thing. So what I want you to do is not just think it through as you're trying to figure out if it's an over or an under estimate, but actually draw a few cases. Um, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that as we go through this. Um, and then a, another little caveat for you is uh, in AP Calculus, we just talk about consistent functions. So the function will consistently be increasing on the interval or decreasing on the interval, or it will be concave up or concave down, or you know, increasing concave up. It's gonna be consistent. So you're not gonna have like a relative max or min on the interval, you're not gonna have a point of inflection. It's gonna be on an interval in which the function is behaving consistently. All right, let's take a look at what we're dealing with. So for left sums, um, what we want to do is uh, have our graphs, right? So I got four different graphs here and let's just make sure we know what they are. So we have increasing and concave up. Then we have increasing and concave down. So those are like the two possibilities there. Then we have decreasing but concave up. And then we have decreasing and concave down. So these are the cases you would have to deal with. So if you're unsure, just draw all four of these and draw your sum and you will know what's going to happen. So let's take a look at the first one. So we make a left Riemann sum here and you can see this is definitely giving us an underestimate because there's those little gaps. And if we have increasing concave down, here's our left Riemann sum. Again, we have those little gaps, so we're gonna get an underestimate. Now, decreasing concave up, our left Riemann sum, we're always over the actual um, area. So this is gonna be an overestimate. And then if we have decreasing concave down, just draw a couple rectangles and you can see that you're always over it. So this is again, an overestimate. So just by drawing these pictures and drawing the sums and you, I've drawn five rectangles, you really only need to draw one to know what's actually happening. Um, you'll know. So it looks like uh, we got when the function was increasing, we had underestimates. Also, let me pause here and say, as I was looking through this at the end, I realized that I used red and green, um, which is a terrible choice. I think it's like Christmassy um, is probably why I did this. Terrible choice for the colorblind. So I apologize to anyone who is red, green, colorblind. I'm using two different colors, but uh, unfortunately you won't notice that. Um, but if a function is increasing, which I have boxed, you will get an underestimate for your left sum. If a function is decreasing, which I have now boxed, you will get an overestimate for your left sum. And you can tell all of that from pictures. So a left sum will over or underestimate depending on if the function whose definite integral you're approximating is increasing or decreasing. So underestimates when you are increasing and overestimates when you are decreasing. Now we're just gonna go through the other options. So our right sum, we have the same four graphs because that's what really matters. And then what we're gonna do is draw in the right sum. Here we go, there's a right sum. You can see that we're always over, so we're getting overestimates. If we are increasing and concave down and we do a right sum, you can see that we're always above, we're getting bigger amounts than we need. So again, we're gonna get an overestimate. So when a function is increasing, it looks like we get an overestimate with a right Riemann sum. Um, if we do decreasing concave up for a right sum, we're underneath it. So can't stress this enough, you should be drawing these things. You shouldn't just be sitting there thinking, like why not sketch a little picture? It will answer your question. And then decreasing concave down, if we draw our sum, we're always inside of there. We're getting uh, smaller amounts than we really need. Um, so we must be underestimating. So increasing came with overestimates. Decreasing always gave us underestimates. So it looks like a right sum will over or underestimate depending on if the function whose definite integral you're approximating is increasing or decreasing. So when you are increasing, you will overestimate. When you are decreasing, you will underestimate, but you're gonna draw the pictures. So I can't stress that enough. Left sums, right sums, trapezoidal sums, draw the pictures. Midpoint, little less useful, but we're still gonna draw pictures. Um, so trapezoidal sums, let's try to do this. So for increasing concave up, um, we draw them. You can see you're always a little bit over. If I'd only drawn one trapezoid, I'd be way over and you would uh, very easily see that it's an overestimate. Um, if we are increasing concave down, 
you can see that we're under. And again, if I had only done one trapezoid, it would have been obvious. I didn't need to do two. I chose two. I think maybe it was a poor choice. Um, so we're getting underestimates there when we were concave down. Um, so concave up gave us over and concave down gave us under. Let's see if that's consistent with decreasing. Um, so decreasing concave up, we are getting an overestimate because we're just a little above. And then finally decreasing concave down, you can see that we're always a little bit under it. If you had done only one trapezoid, it would be more obvious and that's what I should have done. Um, so we're getting an underestimate. All right, so in this case, it's not the increasing and decreasing that matters, it's actually the concavity. So when we are concave up, we're getting overestimates. When we are concave down, we're getting underestimates, which means our trapezoidal sum depends on the concavity. So a trapezoidal sum will over or underestimate depending on if the function whose definite integral you're approximating is concave up or concave down. Draw the pictures and you will know. You don't have to wonder about it. All right, midpoint sums, I don't think the picture is as helpful, but it's kind of helpful, so I'm gonna do it anyway. So for midpoint sums, we got our four scenarios. I'm gonna draw a midpoint sum for the first one. And I don't know, is it obvious that this underestimates? I think it's pretty clear that it underestimates. If we had done one Riemann sum, maybe it'd be more clear. Um, or one midpoint, I should say, one midpoint rectangle. Um, but we're getting an underestimate. So increasing concave up, midpoint gives us an underestimate. Increasing concave down, uh, it's not clear here either, I don't think necessarily, um, but you are definitely getting an overestimate. And then decreasing concave up looks like this. Um, this is going to be an underestimate. And then decreasing concave down looks like this, and that is going to give us an overestimate. So. I don't know if it's very clear from the picture. So I have another way that I think about this. So I'm gonna write some stuff. But first let's notice that it's again the concavity that's determining over and underestimates. So uh, when we are concave up, we're getting underestimates. When we are concave down, we're getting overestimates. So the thing to notice there is concave up gave us an underestimate for a midpoint. Concave down gave us an overestimate for a midpoint. That's gonna be important in a second. Let me just write up what's actually happening. So the midpoint sum will under or overestimate depending on if the function whose definite integral you're approximating is concave up or concave down. Now, the way that I actually remember this, me personally, I don't know if everyone remembers it this way, I just remember that the midpoint sum is the opposite of the trapezoidal sum. It's very easy to remember and to draw the trapezoidal sums and see when you're getting over or underestimates. I just remember the midpoint is the exact opposite of that. So if I'm doing a problem about midpoints and the question is, am I over or underestimating? What I do is I just draw a picture for trapezoids. I see if the trapezoid is underestimating, which would mean the midpoint is overestimating, or if the trapezoid is overestimating, which would mean the midpoint is underestimating because they do the opposite thing. So I know that it has to do with concavity. I figure out what the trapezoid's doing use that to determine what the midpoint is doing, then I write my justification. So that's something that I personally do. Now, just so you can see some sample justifications, because you're probably gonna have to do this maybe on a multiple choice question on the AP exam. Um, oftentimes you have to state this uh, in a free response question. So what should the justification look like? I'm just gonna write a couple down. You can uh, pause this, screenshot it, copy it down, whatever you want. I'm probably not, I'm not even gonna read them, they're just long. Um, so here's four different examples, one for a left sum, right sum, trapezoidal sum, and a midpoint sum, um, just to give you an idea of what you can do. So the thing to note, I think, the most important thing, well, draw stuff. That's the most important idea. You don't have to just keep this in your brain. Um, you can actually work it out. Uh, midpoint, figure out what the trapezoid's doing, and it's the opposite. I would say that's also a, a key thing. And the thing to really keep in mind though, it's the function whose graph or table you're dealing with that determines if you have an over or under estimate. So that's a really important idea. You're gonna draw a graph, draw some rectangles or trapezoids um, and work it out from there. So that's all we got here. I hope you have found this helpful and good luck.